Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day two of the Council on Tall Building and Urban Habitats Eighth World Congress. Hopefully, you all enjoyed day one. We thought it was a pretty great day. And the good news is it gets even better from here on in. I just want to very briefly uh, tell you what's happening today. Um, obviously, we're starting with a plenary session on the 1st July. Then we have the three breakout sessions. And then this afternoon, we have the five technical tour operating to take you uh, around, uh, around Dubai and show some of the seminal projects that are happening. Uh, just an announcement about the Burj Dubai tour. That is going to depart from the main lobby of the Grand Hyatt Hotel. So for those people on that tour, when you come out for lunch from the tent floor down that way, people on the Burj Dubai tour, please make your way to the main Grand Hyatt lobby. The other four tours will depart from the convention center lobby uh, as we've been departing on other things. For those people that have not signed up on any of these tours, we have started a backup list. Um, so I can't guarantee that we're going to get everybody on the body on the tour, but if there's some space left on some of the coaches, then uh, in all the priority of the list, people will be able to join. So those people that have put their name on the list, if they could just be in the right place at the right time. I want to talk very briefly uh, about the Council on Tall Buildings. Um, I'm sure many of you are aware of what we do as an organization, but I'm also aware that some of you aren't. Uh, the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat will be celebrating its 40th year next year. It was formed in 1969. Um, I think it's pretty fair to say that we're the uh, leading international body in the field of, in the field of tall buildings. And um, we've had a very phenomenal past 18 months, two years, um, partly because of the, the worldwide boom in tall buildings. Um, but one thing that I do want to encourage is we have a, uh, an ambition that anybody, any organization, any people that are serious players in the field of tall buildings, uh, active in tall buildings, should be part of our network. So if you as an individual or you as an organization are not part of our network yet, then I would certainly encourage you to consider that during the, uh, the days that you're here or afterwards. We have an exhibition booth out in the exhibition area, and there's a wonderful lady there called Jerry Kerry, been in the council for 26 years, and she can answer any questions that you have um, with regards to membership of the council. Two things I just want to highlight. Um, as I said, we've had a phenomenal 18 months, two years or so, uh, and we're looking to bring on board three new full-time staff members. Uh, hopefully you've all seen the job advertisements in the Congress bags. Um, one of those positions is for a new research director, uh, and the council is going to be getting far more active in the coming years into generating research into access to tall buildings and the, and the urban habitat. So please promote that message for us, um, and we're certainly going to be looking to work with industrial partners um, on these research projects. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was the awards brochure. Um, in 2008, we've expanded our awards, uh, and we're looking to present five awards from the regional areas around the globe for tall building excellence. Last year, uh, we also have two Lifetime Achievement Awards. So last year, the uh, Norman Foster was the recipient of one of these awards. Uh, and the Hearst Tower won the best sustainable tall building, and Beetham Tower Manchester won the best tall building. So I would encourage you all that are actively engaged in tall buildings to consider submitting your projects for one of the prestigious awards for 2008. That's all I have to say. I want to hand over to the chair of the next session, um, who's, I know this is going to be a fantastic session. Um, one of the main reasons that we've brought you all from 42 countries to join us here in Dubai is to celebrate the unbelievable achievements of the Burj Dubai. Uh, and I think the next session is going to put that into context. Uh, for me, it's not just a height issue. Um, You've already seen it when we've been going on the welcome reception. Uh, it is it's certainly uh, impressive in terms of the heights that it's already achieved and it's not yet finished yet. But one thing that is very clear to me about the Burj Dubai, it's not just about height, but actually it's the proportion of the tower. And this is the first time, I think I'm safe in saying, in the history of the world's tallest building, that the world's tallest building will be a predominantly residential building. And of course, 
a residential toll building is completely different from, a, from an office toll building, and therefore the, the proportion of the tower, even now, before it's uh, finished, I, I find quite staggering. So I'd like to welcome all the speakers on stage and the chair for the next session, who is Mark Amaral. Mark is the CEO of the uh, Global Design and Development Division for EMAR. So could you all put your hands together for the speakers and for Mark, who's going to chair the next session. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for coming here. Uh, I've had the great privilege of working with the three gentlemen to my left for now six years with our chairman and the last uh, five years with Adrian and Bill. And seeing us together again sort of brings me back to the very first uh, germination of the idea of the Burj uh, and why we're doing this and where we're doing it. And our, I joined the company in uh, March of 2002. At that time, we had this uh, stack of boards in the back of the office for a Burj Tower at Dubai Marina. It was going to be the highlight of the Dubai Marina project. We had done an international competition at that time, and, uh, but never proceeded with it. And then two years later, we're in the, what's now known as the infamous Imar Night Boardroom, which was uh, uh, the Cosmos coffee shop on Sheikh Zayed Road at the base of the UP Tower. Uh, typically, uh, our chairman would convene uh, as a sort of top lieutenant at about midnight or 1 a.m. and ask us to dream up the next fantastic projects. And at that meeting, he asked me about, Mark, I really want to start this new tower again. Uh, how would you do it? Uh, as a former architect, I, he put me on the spot as he often challenges me. And I said, well, I just say we'd go out to the big tall tower guys. I don't know, call SOM and we'll have a competition and uh, may the best man win. And he paused for a second and said, hmm, that's good. Okay, call them all tomorrow. And then for the next two weeks, we ran around to Chicago, New York, New Haven, Singapore. I think we met in London and we tried to see everybody we could in about two weeks. And uh, now five years later, we're just gone past 160 meters or 160 floors. We went by the 600 meter mark. And uh, for those of you familiar with Dubai, you can take almost the next tallest tower in Dubai, stick that on top and that's still what we have left to build. So we still have a long way to go, but by the end of this year, you're gonna see the tower uh, virtually complete and a very proud achievement. Uh, with that, I'm gonna now introduce our first speaker of the morning. Uh, most of you are very familiar with him, so I'll just uh, let him begin. Uh, he's the visionary person for Amar Properties. He's the one that uh, inspires all of us to break world records and literally go where no man has gone before. Um, please welcome the uh, chairman of the board uh, for Amar Properties, Muhammad Ali Alabar. <laughs> 